Still on the outbreak of the COVID-19, the office of the First Lady Aisha Buhari is presently shut down following the outbreak of the coronavirus in the country. Aisha Buhari is also said, said, also said rather, that her daughter, who recently returned from the United Kingdom, is being among the high burden countries, is in self-isolation. In a statement on Thursday, the wife of the president said, and I quote, earlier, my daughter returned from the UK, being among the high burden listed countries of COVID-19. Based on the advice of the Minister of Health, Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, and that of NCDC, she is on self-isolation, not because she displayed any symptoms of the COVID-19. Please, I urge all parents to do the same if possible, as prevention is better than cure. She called on Nigerians to keep following the advice of the Federal Ministry of Health and the NCDC, expressing hopes that Nigeria can overcome the COVID-19 pandemic if necessary precautions are taken taken at the same time. And joining us now in the studio is Dr. Orode Doherty, who is a pediatrician. Good to have you this morning. It's good to be here. Thank, Thank you. you for obliging us. Now, let's talk about the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus and the pandemic. Are we already in, we, well, no, let's not say are we already in trouble. The, the question would be, how do we manage ourselves moving forward? So we can manage ourselves as individuals, as households, communities, and obviously as a state and a government and the country. I'm not going to talk about government and country. I'm going to start from the individual. Um, as individuals, the, the um, instructions, should I say, or the recommendations are out there. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds each time. Ensure that you use hand sanitizers when you're in a place where you cannot wash your hands to keep your hands away from your face as much as possible if you begin to develop symptoms suggestive of the infection cough sore throat fever difficulty breathing be sure to call the numbers that the national center for disease control has shared mm -hmm. there are also the same numbers uh, there's also numbers for the um, Yaba Infectious Disease Hospital, which you can call and arrange to get yourself tested. So those are the things for the individuals. Obviously, stay away from somebody physically who is exhibiting symptoms. So if somebody is coughing or sneezing near you, keep your, make your, at least your six to ten feet away from the person, offer them a tissue, ensure that they have tissue. If you are coughing yourself, use a tissue, discard of it properly, wash your hands right after. So those are the individual things that we can do. In addition to that, the Epidemiologists have come up with a community mitigation strategy, so right. to speak, which is social distancing. And we've been told that it's going to make the difference. Social distancing is really just cutting down on the amount of social interactions that we're having, mm -hmm. keeping households to themselves. It was found in China during the sort of at the height of the outbreak that it was through household clusters that people were actually spreading the, virus. the infection. Mm. And so it makes sense, it's prudent to close schools, to shut down on places where people gather. Of course, the Lagos state government, as well as federal government, have come out with recommendations on reducing gatherings that are above 50, 50. whether it's religious gatherings or for parties mm -hmm. or schools, which, you know, those are all areas where people gather regularly. There's a lot of human interaction. Mm -hmm. Now, social distancing should not mean social isolation. Right. So as but much I, as possible... What's the difference between the two? Social distancing is just those what recommendations, mm -hmm. separating... Out. Social isolation means don't go and lock yourself up in your room and say, oh, I'm right. sick, no, no contact. Because human interactions are what make life meaningful right right so we're not saying isolate if you have an elderly parent um who has to have a limited number of people around them for example because they are the ones who are the most vulnerable mm. people who are elderly above the age of 60 have a pre-existing condition such as asthma diabetes heart disease those kinds of I individuals should as much as possible stay at home right you know shopping should be done for them anything that needs to be bought from the market should be bought brought mm. to them um, their medicines, they should have enough of their medicines at home so they don't run out. They should have water, food, whoever is staying, and just remain a household unit mm -hmm. as much as possible. All right, so, you know, during this uh, whole experience, part of what the responsibility that each of us have, whether media or as individuals, is to stick to fat, you know, spread the fat and not the fear. Uh, so, in that line, um, there are people who have recovered from uh, COVID 19. Absolutely. And we, we do not know of any vaccine yet. 
what happened that this, you know, this, you know, this, what led to their recovery if there were no vaccines, really? So, COVID-19 um, is a viral infection, and for most viral infections, we do not have treatment or cure. I say most because there are a few that we treat and people actually live for very long. Okay. HIV is mm -hmm. one such viral infection, which people have been on treatment for upwards of 20 years now, and they're doing quite well, having babies, living regular lives. For COVID-19, um, you know, we have no um, cure. We do have management. Mm -hmm. So the recommendations again, stay hydrated, cover your cough, cover your sneeze, dispose of your trash properly, ensure that you're doing your best to reduce um, transmission. Right. But m perhaps most important for yourself, eat well, drink well, and stay on top of it. When and you then say drink well, water, water, I water. guess. Okay. Stay on top of your symptoms. You start to develop complications, alert your care provider. So. In the instance, for example, that you're in the hospital, maybe you're in isolation, I don't know, mm -hmm. and you start to have more difficulty with breathing, on telling your providers, obviously, they will help you with oxygen, in a cannula. If there's a need, they will take over your respiration. But you've got to sort of tell them. And because I think I, I would imagine that in the isolation centers, they're actually being managed actively by medical teams. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be why they're there. It's not just waiting for a test result. Otherwise, you can wait at home, appropriately isolated. So um, the people who have gotten better, whose stories we've read on the internet, mm -hmm. they've talked about the most difficult days, the days when they had difficulty breathing, they had difficulty um, just sleeping, they had very bad headaches, take paracetamol. The recommendations out there, we don't know whether they are true or not. It's to avoid, excuse me, to avoid ibuprofen, mm -hmm. non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. I would say stick to Panadol, just stick to Panadol, mm -hmm. stay hydrated. If you really get sick, obviously you should have called the number and being taken to the center where right. they can give you more information. Okay, now that we're talking about medicines, what is this we hear about chloroquine? Are there facts about chloroquine? Um, so, there, so yesterday, the um, US president announced that they were going to ramp up chloroquine and that it had been found mm -hmm. to be useful. Um, if you notice, though, right afterwards, the Food and Drug Administration head came and said, we haven't finished trialing these drugs. But... You know, I'm told that the markets went haywire, the chloroquine um, uh, products and were flying off the shelves as early as last week anyway, mm -hmm. as soon as the initial rumors came out. So it is not impossible that chloroquine will be used. In fact, one of the recommendations now is for mild disease, people are using chloroquine and another drug that's been used for HIV mm -hmm. in the past. And then as, if you get worse, then they switch you to another antiviral medication. So. It is likely that it will be used. Mm -hmm. I can assure you my Nigerians are buying chloroquine off the shelves now. I don't know whether they know the dose mm -hmm. that they should be using. But really, all of this should be done under medical supervision right. because chloroquine has side effects mm -hmm. as well. All right. Thank you so very much, Doctor, already for your time this morning. Thank you for having me.